Welcome everyone to the 309th weekly MLP Drawing School live critique stream. Somehow, it is February 1st, despite me specifically saying last month was not nearly close enough to being done January. That's how that works, right? Yeah, right, can you yell at it? Yeah. But here we are. We're in February, I guess. Somehow. Yeah. Uh, so, f list of wonderful characters joining us both silently and loudly today. We got Vex. <laughs> Hello. And Alley Claw. Hello. I guess Alley Claw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still edited. <laughs> we got a CPC, I believe, hidden in the background drawing silly drawings. Uh, we got. Open bracket. <laughs> yeah. We got a Len. Hello. And we got Fluffy's Eye. Hello, or just Eye today, I guess. How do you pronounce the heart as a sound? <laughs> you you pronounce it with love. We yeah. got Zai. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. If you have any art you'd like to submit, uh, we got a bit of space here. You can probably submit a picture. We have so much today already. You just yeah. gotta ask nicely. Ex yeah. Extra. <laughs> we accept bribes of candy, though. Uh, your picture will definitely be up there if you offer us candy. That's called a bribe, and I'm 100% ready for that. So, I'm on board. I'm, on, I'm ready. We're, we are uh, very corrupted here. Yeah. <laughs> but in the best way possible. <laughs> because it's for candy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so let's start off with the person actually in the stream today. Hey, Fluffy. Our guest is Isaac. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, so I'm not too happy with the like back end or the legs or the neck mostly, but any and all advice would be good. So, sorry, to repeat, back leg... I assume you're talking. The, the, yeah, the the back end in general, but like all the legs, uh, the neck. I'm not sure of. I'm not sure if the head's too small. So, I would say the neck's too long, but also your style tends to have a bit longer limbs, so it's not too far off what you normally have. Mm. I, was, I guess I'm trying to go somewhere between my usual style and like, well, I guess not entirely the G5 style. Face wise, I was trying to mimic the G5 style, but and like the little ear. Uh, and the longer horn. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess the legs, I'm just sort of experimenting with a different way of doing the legs because uh, I'm never really very good at doing curved, like bent legs. There was a lot of construction lines you can't really see very clearly. Or I was just like messing around with stuff. I was drawing them kind of like poseable dolls, you know. I I do notice your, your far leg. Um... It looks like... Oh, yeah, that one's a mess. <laughs> yeah, I, I would just shift that thing down more unless if there's a something to indicate that it's actually squished up. Because we can see yeah, with I... your... Sorry? That's absolutely fine. I just didn't really know what I was doing with it, so I just threw some lines down. <laughs> okay. I would just take its hawk area and just move it down to here. That way it still shows that it's a bit relaxed like the other one, but yeah. gives it the full length. Well, that's a good position, yeah. Is the body too long? I always feel like that's something I struggle with, where the body feels, like, the back end feels like it's stretched up too far. Yeah, it like, does, the body does feel a little bit long. I think it's just mostly this back end area being too yeah. big. So, it'd probably be more up here. It was actually, like, even longer before I, like, adjusted <laughs> it. Like, oh, that looks better, and now it's still, like, not good enough. Yeah. Uh, I was drawing my Draconicus character today. I'm like, no, the body's not long enough. She needs to be longer. She's too short. <laughs> <laughs> now I have the opposite problem. Like the 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 way that the, the sort of neck comes in and like curves into the back and then into the the rump is always like something that I struggle with. I never really knew how to do very well. I wanted the the pose to have a lot of like sort of dynamicness to it. Like I wanted it to be quite bendy and lively. Mm -hmm. Then it's about just not making her look too long, I guess. 
or too squished. The right balance. And it's hard to do that traditionally. Because <laughs> it's hard to do a lot of... You can't, like, drag and move things. <laughs> yes, I know, the air. <laughs> it will be there. <laughs> <laughs> It's just not there yet. <laughs> I had other priorities. <laughs> it's it's also interesting because the G5 has like the eyes much further away. And even mm -hmm. how I've drawn it now is still too close for how the G5 style looks. But she looked very like bug-eyed when I tried to do it the, the G5 way. Are you, um, so are you the, trying to lean really hard into the G5 style, or is it like a mesh between your style and G5? Sort of sort of a mesh. I wanted it to feel like you look at it and be like, oh yeah, it looks like Izzy. Um, not like, it looks like Zai's ponies with mm -hmm. like his, Izzy's mane and colorings, you know? <laughs> Something yeah, I might recommend, because like, muzzles in G5 are kind of weird. They don't emphasize mm -hmm. the nose as much. I know we're in like a 3D... I need a better color nowhere in like a 3d medium where they mm -hmm. don't really emphasize the nose like that it's more like they emphasize the nose oh, yeah, bridge yeah. and then just the and then the nostrils if it's mm -hmm. something you want to push more for to kind of like sculpt the face but definitely optional i, I considered that and i might play around with it yeah i was trying to i wasn't sure what sort of i did lots of different poses as well because i wasn't sure what to go for because I wanted to feel kind of floaty um, and like maybe bouncing uh, you know like an abstract you can imagine it being sort of like a promotional vector art slapped on like a, a toy box or something which is like oh here's a character just kind of like in space uh, looking cute <laughs> as opposed to standing I do like it um, but... um, I, if I may though the tail and it, I think this is the thing that pops up in a lot of your art and it's a, it mm -hmm. seems to be a normal thing I just not a fan of the connection. And the only reason is because yeah. that spine got to hurt. <laughs> I know. There are some some characters, not all characters, but some characters I like to have the tails that have quite like a floofy uh, back to it where it like curls out. So how does it look like? Uh, is he look at my reference sheet that I made earlier. Okay, it does come out kind of like a more relaxed angle on her. So I wasn't really sure uh, what angle it was going to be at. I just kind of needed to know roughly where the tail's going to be. <laughs> But yeah, I'll probably we'll probably smoothen that a bit. Nope, oh, very cute. Keep it up. Hell yeah. Thank you. All right, yeah, shall we like, move on like, to our next help. lovely one? Hi, I just lost my oh, pony. Oh wait, there's some move there's some moving around happening. Just like trying to see yeah. It Yeah. <laughs> I think it does does help a bit actually yeah. moving it. Oh out there. See, that's why I, I like doing digital art because I like how traditional feels, but with digital art, it's cool. That you can just sort of move things around and be like, "Oh, how does that look? Oh, cool. Yeah. No way. I'll move it back." <laughs> that's all. I will have to screenshot that and. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So our next one, uh, it was submitted. Oh, where is that? It's an actual message submitted to me. Which is crazy. Someone did the unthinkable and they responded to the actual posting for the critique oh. stream. I know. So this is so uh, fine line. I can see them. <laughs> Weird, right? So this is a fine line. You might know her from Yay. such places as our Discord and subreddit. Yay. Uh, Steam Flash says, Hi, it's been a while, but hopefully I can be around more often now. Trying to give myself a push to talk more, regardless of how awkward it feels. I'd like to ask some critique on this. A pony rising, uh, a pony ri a pony raising her front legs as a wave to a pegasus in flight while she's running somewhere. Yes, it's her. Stumbled onto, uh, onto mlpds.art, saw her picture, and decided to use it in practice... I'd started. Hey, I know that that site. Shout <laughs> <laughs> out to Pixie. <laughs> I say, push your talk. It's helpful. <laughs> Ooh, this is super cute. I love I love seeing our little our little mascot friend. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely push yourself. Like the whole this angle on its own is hard, but then to also put yeah. the awkward pose of waving because ponies ponies can't do that. They have <laughs> yeah. weird shoulders that can't extend that high, and yet here we are. Not the that portion. you can extend them that high. It's a cartoon, but 
sorry, I just had to read through their entire text blob again. Uh, the the portion's anatomy construction of the pony is the primary critique con, uh, question, but it's okay to ask about other as. But if it's okay to ask about other aspects too, then I'm unsure about the shading. Would like to know where I might have gone wrong with it. The ground shadows are, was particularly difficult to figure out, and I don't think I did a very good job with it. Also, the hair texture is new to me, and since shading is, or since shading is tied to what I'm uh, wondering, how could I have done better here? There you guys go. Questions. I love when people ask questions. You get bonuses, Steam Flash. Oh, yeah. on, like, my layer's on, like, screen or something. Oh, well. Yeah, this is a difficult pose to do, because you've got to sort of consider... I'm assuming you did stuff like this, but... Um, I'm just doing it so that I can sort of figure it out. Because it's funny, for a pose like this, I almost want to say, break the shoulder right away. Uh, don't don't bother having the horse shoulder. Have it just be straight up human shoulder-ish thing raising their hoof up to the sky. Oh hi. Hello. Hello, Hello there. <laughs> Why am I doing legs? I'm terrible at legs. Don't know okay. that. Yeah, I'm to imagine them sort of move, with the leg moved. moved I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't have tried this perspective. I would have been like, ooh, that's, that's going to be hard. And I would have chickened out. You get even more bonus points. Mm -hmm. I've done some difficult angles before, but this one takes the cake. <laughs> Hard to convincingly like. Hard to, it's also hard to run whilst waving, like as a pony. <laughs> uh, that is something that's making it more challenging, I think, is that it's an unnatural pose, I think, for them to be doing, because. This, this stuff needs to be sort of like kicked up, but then getting it to man, I I'm already not good at legs, let alone like legs in this really extreme like running pose, and also with having lost the the balance of this leg, um, and also at an extreme angle, <laughs> like wow, <laughs> the challenging one. I just want to think that this axis here is just faced directly at us. Like, the, it doesn't really make any sense actually moving it. I don't feel like if you were to make the axes have an end point, then it would sort of help to determine the actual like three D aspect. Or if it disappears off into infinity, it can get confusing, I think. There we wow. go, we should share some posts. Yes, better. There we go. This is an extreme angle, wow. <laughs> yeah. I've actually... Uh, I'm trying to find a reference of it, and they they have something somewhat similar in the MLP movie. Um, but it's from a lot lower angle on the front. I don't think they did this in the show. Yeah, it's... It's not... Yeah, I didn't... You know um, you have a crazy angle when everyone here is attempting to draw next to you the exact same <laughs> angle, because we're like, how do you... Uh, <laughs> what is the world? I'm just, just going to do a leg off to the side here of, like, side view and, like, the running angle, because, like, figuring out the pose of the leg is, like, first and foremost the most important thing, um, and then, like, putting it into an angle 
Uh, so that, that, that came out pretty well. That's pretty nice. There we go. You know what? Um, Where's yeah, the when plushie? It, when it, oh, when, hey, when it comes to like... Okay. Hello. Morning. When it comes to a, a pose like this, one of the really important things that I would say is keep... Uh, 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 why did it change to that color? Why would you do this? Uh, uh, for shortening. Keep foreshortening in mind, which basically means that uh, parts of the of the body are going to appear very distorted and very short. You know, for example, uh, with this hoof, you might you might only see, for example, you know, the the front of the hoof and then the actual leg, you know, leggy part. Might just might just be something like that. It might be might appear a lot shorter than you imagine it would, and you know that's that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing these sorts of uh, really interesting, really exaggerated sort of camera angles and you know that sort of stuff. Because there is this tendency to like want to show absolutely everything, and sometimes that can be not quite as useful. But really fun. Good job on pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. I still think there's going to be a lot of overlap in this. Mm. Actually, you really want to really want to push the overlaps to sort of sell. You can see everyone doing these um, boxes to try to sort of work out. <laughs> exactly what's going on. Those are going to be very helpful. Uh, yeah. Because they give you like something to work off. Oops. Yeah, I think this is good an attempt as I can as I can make there. Um, I don't know how much of my little sketching underneath we can see. Or everyone else is. There's a lovely one here happening underneath as well. I think by Ellie. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out like that back leg. Um, this is a fun that? pose. This is a challenge. This is This is good. This is fun. Yeah. Hell yeah. And also, because um, I know one of the questions was about the anatomy. Sometimes in art, it's not about having perfect anatomy. It's about making it look good. So mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need to go for oh. hyperrealism in the anatomy when you're drawing a cartoon horse. You can afford to break some bones. You can afford to make things weird. And like the foreshortening alone could end up, like you'll have a giant hoof, right? It's not going to be exactly perfect, but... Um, it, it helps sell the idea of like the extreme angle. Foreshortening tends to be very helpful when you're doing extreme angles like this. Um, you, we can get away with doing other stuff kind of not as extreme. Uh, rambling, but um, ah, words. Someone has mm. to take over. So, it's, what's it's... something that. Oh, sorry. No, all good. Uh, so, oh. when you're doing these sorts of like angles where parts of the body are a lot closer to the camera. Like for example, this hoof, if they're reaching this hoof up, it's probably going to be pretty close to the camera. Um, one of the pieces of advice that I've been given is to draw the closest thing first. So for example, this hoof, this end of the hoof, that's going to be big. That's, that's, that's close to the camera. So that's going to be pretty damn big. So, you know, feel free to draw it first and to have it like take up a fair bit of space and then, to like, you know, and then to, you know, just work your way sort of backwards and all that kind of sort of stuff that can be sometimes pretty helpful. Okay. I've done this on a new layer. Oh, well. Oh, and, uh, yeah, anatomy, especially when it comes to these sorts of like exaggerated weird sort of 
angles and poses and all that kind of sort of stuff. Anatomy can some you can sometimes chuck anatomy in the bin and not worry about it too much. You know. Yeah, I think that's kind the, of what the, I was saying as well. The, the the place to worry about anatomy is like you know for the more standard poses. When it comes to these kinds of things, it's good to have the anatomy knowledge in your head, but you're probably not going to like show it off. You're not going to show off the anatomy uh, in the usual sorts of ways that you've sort of you know been training yourself to show off anatomy. It's going to be it's going to be all weird and exaggerated and strange. Mm-hmm. Something I was. Um... Thinking of if like, we didn't know until you mentioned the context that there was a Pegasus. I mean, we can see she's waving at someone, but it's kind of like she's waving at the viewer. If you want there to be more like visual storytelling, having like a shadow, it'd be much blurrier than hers because it'd be further away, obviously. So don't do it stark like I'm doing it here. But um, you know, having a shadow being uh, cast by the Pegasus will help to just have that little bit of like environmental storytelling. Yeah, there we so- go. He's showing off pen. In, in the shadow, showing off like the fact that there are wings. We'll be like, mm-hmm. oh, it's a flying thing. I accidentally hit the side of my tablet, and now I don't know why my brush doesn't seem to actually be doing anything. <laughs> You'll find it. I believe in you. <laughs> why are you not actually drawing? All right. Shall we move on to our next picture? Um, yeah. Did players in the, I guess you uh, get the, point. the Picarto, I'll just say, is there any other questions you had or is everything kind of understandable? <gasps> nope. Yeah, and like we like we were saying before, um, looking right doesn't necessarily mean anat- it's autonomic, uh, the anatomy is perfect. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to let go of that, but it's one of those things where, um, it's good practice to maybe draw something and then zoom out and kind of take it in as a whole instead of the individual parts and see if it's mm-hmm. looking right, even if the anatomy is a bit off. It, it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't actually need to look right. You just need to convince us that it looks right. Yeah, that's and better. It, yeah. It, so, it, it sounds really strange, but it's, it's just like, you know. Focusing on overlapping bits, keeping like uh, these sorts of like, you know, boxes to sort of constrain everything and be a base that you draw everything off, you know, just experiment and and mess with it and try like getting photos and then drawing like extreme angles based off photos and, you know, I think you've done an admirable job. Hell yeah. Yeah. For sure. All my messy scribbles are here. <laughs> get All the right. point. <laughs> so much strong body on it. Uh, this is by uh, RSR Gamer Twenty Seven, working on a character design for a story where uh, Changeling uses wrath and hate as a power to transform into this. He has three horns because I wanted to make a uh, shape like a crown, like a demon king, but m- but may but may make some changes. Uh, want to improve this, but don't know what to do next. Also, struggle with the eyes. Hmm. I was trying to do like angry eyes last night as well. It's, it's harder than you think. Of me. <laughs> but I think you did a good job, better than me anyway. I like the sort of crease. Everything looks so quite foldy and stretchy. It's good. Mm. And yeah, the horns are good. I like the sort of twist where you've got like the the lines sort of creating like shape to them, so we can sort of see how they're turning. It's very yeah. good. My only thought. So I, I've been thinking about this. I was looking at this on the Reddit. Um, I love the idea of the horn crown. My only thing is, um, in a design perspective, you just kind of have a flat base going on. Like with the ears, the crown, like the the horns and the ears all kind of meet up at the same thing. Yeah, I, I thought like it would be at the ears more... for more horns. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure these back ones here are ears because they said three horns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just think it would be more visually dynamic if we had some size difference going on or height oh. difference. Like it, it maybe uh, yes. you could have like a... drawing that ear on the side. Yes, I love the idea of the ears being on the side. That looks so good. Yeah. Mm. 
basically yeah, before so you before you jump into before you jump into drawing the horns and all that kind of sort of stuff, just like try to try sketching out like lightly sort of how the whole shape of everything should go. Just mess around with different shapes and then you can like position the horns to sort of fill out that space and do all that kind of sort of weird stuff approaching it from like a design perspective. Something you can do is um, copy and paste just your base head shape here without the horns and just chuck a, a bunch next to each other and on each mm. one, even if it's dumb or stupid or di like just try to do something different on each one, even if it's not something you necessarily want to end up with, it just helps exercise and push yourself to think in a slightly different way to get yourself out of that box you may have made by thinking like, yes, this is the design I want. It's a crown. So there's three of them. It, you know, it's just good to play and practice and then you can really find some interesting shapes. Yeah, it's fun to do stuff like that. I, I have a, um, a sort of exercise where I just, you know, grab a bunch of heads and then like draw different hat, sorry, different uh, hairstyles on them. Try to sort of work out what hair works and all that kind of sort of stuff. Not fun exercise. Yeah. So this muzzle is coming towards us. This muzzle is closer to us than the eyes are, so this muzzle is probably going to like appear bigger and overlap the eyes a little bit. You can see it over here. You can see how the muzzle is fairly big and kind of like almost overlaps the sort of space where the eyes take up. Especially because with this kind of pose, or sorry, with this kind of expression, the thing, one of the important things is that kind of your nose, if, if you do this sort of expression, you find that like your nose, <laughs> yeah, your nose like scrunches up. It's like, you know, if you look at it from I was the about side, to say, yeah, that's what I was doing on this as well. Your nose like, you know, scrunches up and like nostrils sort of flared. Yeah. Nose that's scrunched. not a word. So, um, the big. mouth sort of brings up the core, especially with a creature like this, uh, where we feel like you'd have this sort of almost dog like sort of snarl at the side here. Um, and just sort of pushing the exaggeration of this like angry, like if you want them to look more like smirky, then that's like totally understandable. What I first saw when I looked at this was this character smirking or evil like. But if they weren't meant to be smirking anymore, because you're saying that they they use like sort of hatred and anger, like if if what they're meant to be doing is is a more snarling, angry expression, then definitely like opening up the mouth there to make it look more angry and snarling than more than smirking, is is a thing because it it's very di like expressions are I, I think what people get scared off by a lot, but also what I find to be the most fun part about them is that it's. There's so many hundreds of ways to do them, and you could just play around with them all day. Because like changing simple like things can sometimes adjust the expression in such a huge way. So like mm -hmm. even even so, even so much as like adding little bits of details just uh, can change a lot about about the way the ex expressions looks, or just like moving a line subtly, or, or like adding more of like like you know having like a mouth like this versus. Uh, Sort of like or well, this or this can do a lot to to, to change what the character is uh, expressing. So yeah, just playing around with that is fun and trying to exaggerate. Like okay, what's an extreme version of this expression? Mm. Expressions are the one place where like you know, changing something by like a millimeter, changing a line by like a millimeter, or changing the way that the line curves, like like the tiniest tiniest amount, mm -hmm. can completely change everything. Absolutely. So, Mess about a little bit. In terms of eyes in particular, a couple of um, tips that I would say is if you want... Okay, okay, so, you know, you've got the iris, this, you know, the part of the eye that contains, like, the pupil and all that kind of sort mm -hmm. of stuff. The less of that that touches the outside of the eye, so if, if the iris, for example... Uh, Yes, that's what I found when I started drawing mine. Was like I tried doing the the. Oops, I can't draw all of a sudden. Yeah. If if the iris doesn't touch the sort of outside of the eye, your character ends up looking a bit more crazy 
and angry more manic. and that kind of sort of stuff. Yeah, look, yeah, a bit more manic. Like for example, right here, you've got the this part that just doesn't necessarily touch the outside of the eye, and it looks a bit more manic. It looks a bit more that. Alert. Sort of it looks like the eye could move around a lot. It feels like ready to ready to like here. Just observe. Yeah. It's like you know the iris is like you know focused. half embedded. It's sorry. This is yeah. this is mine. I no no I no no in there. Okay. No no that's 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 no no that's great. Okay. Um, <laughs> here, it ends up looking a lot more sort of menacing, a lot more like you know in control, menacing kind of sort of stuff. Yeah, so yeah, it's just it's, the vibe that you're trying to go for. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting to like mess about with eyes and all that kind of sort of stuff. Like to be honest, the thing that I could like recommend is just like draw a bunch of different heads and you know your heads can be like as you know as simple as like you know circle neck uh, part under the neck and then just you know try expressions on it see see what works to be fair though changelings don't have irises they're just colored yeah so good point probably what they were going for i just added an eye there to, if you wanted to put an eye oh, there that's I what i would do I'm yeah, you could do. You could do. You could easily put just like a little slit of like white in the eye if that's what you want to do, just to illustrate the idea. Because again, like having uh, creatures that just have like a a bug like sort of glazed over like iris without uh, a sclera without an iris in it, um, like adding a little bit of detail there can make it look more. Is it because it, it again looks looks relaxed because you you can't like see the the sort of details that give you this idea of the eye being like pinpricked and moving around. I've I've seen I've seen people um do this interesting thing with like changeling eyes where they like do this sort of stuff. They just do some stuff like that. That can uh, be really interesting. There's also some ways you can do it. I mean also considering it's what it's a very hate filled changeling, they could have red irises with like a like a really like intense small pupil of black or something. I don't know. It's it's free to whatever you want to make it. Mm-hmm. Have fun, it's good. Alright, shall we move on to our next picture? Sure. Yeah. I like this guy wants to eat all my cookies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is by Starsong Dust, and it's uh, Angry Starsong V2. I saw this yeah. one. I was gonna it say I, thought we, I feel like we've seen the original. I think I, I actually maybe maybe we have. Why can't? Oh, okay. Do we have the original somewhere? Yeah, we've done the because we was we talked about the week? teeth before. Yeah, I think I do remember talking about the teeth. Before. The horn positioning looks familiar. I don't sure if this is one we talked about last week or not. Here's good. <laughs> If if you do resubmit a uh, thing to us, it can be useful to be like <gasps> to be like here's a link to the original. I do think nice. um, what we can talk about because they're getting into digital art, I believe, from what I've seen in the Discord. So we can talk about the painting and the shading and stuff of the digital art rather than the anatomy today, since we've got, already gone over this anatomy. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the, the twist of the neck here because it can be a tricky thing. Hmm. Okay, so here's uh, an interesting kind of sort of thing. Over here, with these two legs, these two back legs, this this one, I think on on all of the anatomy, like oh, sorry, on, on all of the rest of the pony, like this this side is like in shadow. But on this back leg, this side is in light. Uh, what I'd probably do instead is just make this entire thing in shadow. You know, just keep it sort of consistent. But no big stress. No big issues. Something else that might be interesting. So I imagine that the light 
the light source is probably going to be like a pale yellow kind of sort of thing because that's yeah that's that's what the sun is and all that kind of sort of stuff so what you can do to sort of show that off is in the sort of you you've got your like basic pony color you've got your like here is the color that the pony is in the light area instead of just you know pushing the color towards white you can also push it a push the tone a little bit towards yellow and it helps brighten up the uh, sort of helps brighten up the tone a bit and also sort of show off that yes the light source is this sort of yellow color or whatever sort of color the light source is so basically you can also change the hue along with the uh, brightness and then because that is yellow in the shadow area I'll push the hue the other way into the dark blues yeah makes it feel a little little bit more dynamic mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff if you're interested there is a guide on the uh, site which I will link I haven't drawn a pony with grit, like visible gritted teeth in ages because I remember there was this thing you do with the teeth sort of like overlapping, and I I used to do that a lot and I haven't <laughs> done that in ages. Yeah, we covered the teeth last time anyway. I don't remember a lot of it, uh, so I don't remember like what parts we've sort of done or haven't done. But I'm just taking the parts that you know, have to be stuff anyway, just in case it helps. <laughs> mm. I think I think it looks pretty good. Um, I like this. Whoever did that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Building up the inner eye a bit. <laughs> the Yeah, it's it's always hard to sort of work out where light the, the light should go and where the shadow should go and all that kind of sort of stuff. I like um getting a old just a piece of paper or, you know, a canvas or whatever and just like uh imagining a light source somewhere. Like, hey, here is the sun. And then drawing like a bunch of different like boxes and uh, and cones and then trying to sort of imagine like okay here's where it falls to on the ground sort of trace those along and like try to basically just try to uh, sort of draw the shadows on these very basic sort of shapes as practice like where to actually where to place shadows on sort of more complicated sort of shapes a few things just to sort of break down a lot of what i've drawn as uh to pay attention to positioning of the horn bending stretchiness of the face like in these sort of parts here uh uh having curved soft lines like this one here oops that's the terrible color um, you have this here, like what you know, where like curved, soft, relaxed sort of parts are very gentle, whereas parts like this, that's also a horrible color, are very like stark and stretched because the the legs pushed, and then you have got this as well where the hoof is like sort of stretched, it's like sort of bent out because it's it's like there's pressure on it, like this, and the leg is pushing down, so it's creating this sort of like joint on the hoof where it's being squished up a bit. Um, whereas this one is nice and relaxed because it's kind of just hanging. So there's lots of fun things to do with anatomy, considering the marshmallowiness of ponies. I just, just play with that. <laughs> Hell yeah! Shadows are fun and strange and weird. Mm -hmm. Some something that can be um, inter interesting as well is to um, uh, if you want to sort of practice your shadow placement is to let me get a color that will actually show yeah is to do it very hard so basically uh, to sort of block out where the shadows will be in a very kind of hard way especially like if you're drawing 
uh, like practicing drawing like real horses and all that kind of sort of stuff. This can be really useful and really helpful. At least it has been for me. But yeah, no, no stress. Learning, learning like where shadows go and all that kind of sort of stuff is just uh, bleh. It's hard. It's difficult and annoying. So no stress. It'll take time. All right. Shall we move to our next picture? Hell yeah. Let's do it. Wait. Do do. This is by Environmental Gas 688. Just testing Photoshop. Who opened up Photoshop? We're meant to be on Aggie. <laughs> oh. That's studio paint. This is, this is pretty cool. There's okay. lots of fun posing going on here. I like the, the expression over here. I can't draw. Never mind. <laughs> okay, I can I can see I can see from the language that it's not in English, so we'll we'll link the help desk article to like put it back to English for you, because <laughs> obviously it's meant to be in that. <laughs> did they did they give any um any more details or stuff that they were looking help for help with or nope? All right, fair enough. All good. I think it looks good. It's a nice like sketchy sort of. Pose, just just a nice sort of sketchy picture and all that kind of sort of stuff. Something I'm looking at and thinking about is um, I'm thinking this is Pinkamina here, right? Is that is that a, an educated good guess? That this is like yeah. some form of all right. Either, so... either Pinkamina or Flutters. True. This pony, this flat-haired pony. Um, my thought because this pose is great. I love this pose. I want to exaggerate it more, so I almost mm. want to twist her at more of a diagonal. So she's either really slunching back in her chair and like just like has her. I I can envision like she's just like really slunching back, and I know that's not like a real word, but it's fine. And she has her <laughs> puff up there, and she's just you know just letting it all. Poses are messy, and sometimes Confident. you need to invent weird words to to describe them that just sort of fit for some reason. Slunching, <laughs> slunching. <laughs> but like uh, I know her, the chair maybe like the the chair back is on the other side, and she just has her arm, you know, hanging off of it, and her mic going. Up. This is so messy. This is just kind of like me gesture sketching it out to like get the vibe. Um, so if I was to be a little more nicer i just really want to play with that that really lean back in the chair i wonder how Ooh, you would do kid. that without like a chair back though well i mean i can't tell if you can. there is or isn't oh yeah it's just a stool hmm in that case i just want to have them standing like the really intimidating, like put the leg on the table. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, what's up? What's up? What's up, gang? Because <laughs> then you can have more fun with that. It's like a power move. <laughs> clearly, they're intimidating or making them blush in some they're way. They're trying like, to get trying to get their number. A very cocky attitude. <laughs> or they could put their foot on the stool itself, like. I'm just trying to think of like not iconic scenes, but like the tropey scenes where like bad boy walks into the bar and does some sort of like slam onto a table with either their foot or an arm or something like real relaxed and just like confidence. Like, yeah, I don't care. I'm here. Mm. I'm just. I just having this scene while people are jumping and doing all sorts of things in the background. <laughs> All right, it's shall fun. we move on to our next one? Yeah, definitely definitely share more stuff with us because it's fun and interesting. Yeah, and questions. Let us know yep. what you want help with.
All right, we got this one by Monica Suki Suki, and it's taking a break. No questions asked. I love it. It's really interesting, kind of like fun sort of fun sort of thing. It's very cute. My eyes drawn to this one right away. The yeah, the styles fun. I do feel like the thigh is bending the wrong way. If I'm understanding it, because it looks like she's sort of laying back in like human, uh, human style. Mm hmm. Um, but it feels like the thigh. If, yeah, that's a good color. So you you want to sort of like have like the weight slumped back. You're, you're right in having the legs straight because you know they're going to be supporting. Uh, um, you could go you could go for having a thigh like one like sort of rested over another, but um. If you want to have them separated, that's absolutely fine too. They can just sort of be like this. Um, let's see, switch colors. There we go. That's a good one. Uh, definitely under sketching and stuff in different colors. Um, so Q to Mark would kind of be like over here. Let's sit down to sort of draw. It's probably like you mm. get better. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's all about like how it sort of creates the, the bend in the in the body if that makes sense like how the, having like the, the a bit the hooves sort of hanging off the cloud uh giving us like a sense of like how they're positioned helps a bit as well chin <laughs> Yes, interesting. I should grab some reference to work out how this, how I imagine this looking, but I am lazy. <laughs> Do as I say, nice. others. I do. All right. Yeah. Shall... I can imagine something along those lines being like. You know, Shame that I've picked the same color, but <laughs> I can imagine something because these legs are like out and stretched. You're not going to get as much of like a a bump for the thigh. So I'd imagine something almost kind of like the, almost almost something along those lines ish kind of sort of thing. That's that's how I can imagine this sort of pose going. Yeah. But yeah, good fun pose. Definitely keep on uh, keep it up and keep on chucking stuff our way. If or the next time you track us a thing, um, it can be useful to sort of see or to sort of chuck us, uh, you know, anything that you had trouble with, anything that you're sort of looking for help with, anything that you think you did pretty particularly well at, you know. Let's just tailor our advice to you. Oh, oh. people are leaving. I don't know. No. <laughs> All right, shall we move on to our next picture? Let's go. Hell yeah. Thank you, Mario. <laughs> You gotta be careful on that one. Nintendo doesn't play. <laughs> yeah. Fine. It sounds like Chris Pratt now, so. <laughs> uh, so this is by Flyna. Fly going out. Oh, I don't know. Fly going out. Azure Lemon Drop, a uh, Spaceborne Marine OC for Fic in Progress. Hell yeah, you drew a thing. Let's go. <laughs> I love it when people draw things, it's great. Especially the armor, that looks really good. You can make the ear big. Make the ears huge. So I've submitted and... here as, as even though I know I've improved a lot in terms of <laughs> drawing to scale slash anatomical correctness, correctness, I still uh, wouldn't accept this 
grade of art for creating my own cover art. I've also entertained and would consider commissioning someone to draw a cover art for me, but I'd, uh, but it'd be just super neat if I could eventually get to the point where I could produce something watercolored that I think is good enough, uh, or good enough, or digitally. So well, I have some good advice. Eventually, you will be able to because you just keep on keep on arting, and eventually you'll be like, "Hey, this this is pretty alright." Yeah. Yeah. Pose is a good good job on like the twisty, interesting pose, but yeah, poses are gonna be like a difficult one. They have a large blurb here about all the fine details about this armor. It's really <laughs> neat. Hell yeah. You've got like, you know, the shoulder, shoulder here, the whole chest sort of thing facing this kind of like way. Actually, the whole chest sort of thing like facing us a fair bit more and all that kind of sort of thing. Then this is like, hips are like very uh, side on and it's interesting. I imagine you'd want uh, some hard armor up on that thigh because really it's not if it's horse like it's not really doing much flexing like a regular hip would do so a piece of hard armor there would Makes sense because it's not an area that's moving. Mm. Well, they just have it over a bunch of other areas. Very cool. Mm. Oh. If if you're going for um, these sorts of like poses in the future, um, I think what would be really useful is just look at videos of people wandering about, and then just uh, at random points through the video, pause it, and then try to sort of sketch how they look. Because I think the thing that's kind of throwing me off a little bit about the body is I don't think that this walk cycle. That they're halfway through, like it looks like they're walking somewhere, but uh, I'm not quite getting the sense that it's sort of been based off a real person walking. It's kind of like a little bit. I'd sort of expect this leg to kind of be coming out this way to balance everything and some other stuff like that. I don't know, probably just me. All right. Uh, does anyone else have any other art they'd like to submit? Any other questions they'd like to ask? Because this appears I've to be been, our last one. I've been admiring the art that's been drawn over the bottom. There's like a alley being scared of the germs and dead CPC with a cute little ghost coming out. And I see that someone turned the W into into buff. <laughs> oh no, they're not. I thought these were uh, arms. Okay, cool. They're like cute little creatures. <laughs> I thought they were like buff yeah. arms doing like a flex. <laughs> That's cute little silly drawers happening down there.
All right. Oh, well, part. seeing as we haven't had anything submitted, that looks like it. So thank you all for coming. See you again next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.